I ain't no bitch made simp, you hear me? I used to be one of them happy go lucky dumbasses though, back before that snake Jessica showed her true fucking colors. Shit, when I first met that fine piece of ass at this basement party, back in 09, I knew I had to make her mine. She was working that tight little black dress, long tan legs that just went on for days. Body of a goddamn goddess. I laid on my smooth ass game, and before I knew it we was knocking boots every other night. Couple years later, I wifed that up, you know what I'm saying. Put a big fat rock on her finger and got her last name switched to Thompson. Figured I had it made. Married to a jaw-droppingly hot sex freak who let me hit it whenever I wanted. We even popped out a couple coochie crunchers over the years. For a while their life was tits, man. But then that disloyal bitch had to go and fuck everything up. Those two little runt daughters of mine were the only good things to come out of my shitshow marriage to Jessica. I remember the day the first one was born, Alyssa or Allie or whatever the fuck her name was. Nurse handed me this squirmy little creature all wrapped up tight, and I got to hold her first before they gave her to Jessica. I'll be damned if that wasn't the promised moment of my miserable life up until that point. Holding my own kid, knowing I was now responsible for protecting this helpless little human. Then three years later, out popped kid number two, Sarah, or Samantha? Shit, I can't remember, doesn't matter. Point is, those two little girls were like a glimmer of light in my otherwise fucked up existence with their mom. If it wasn't for them, I probably would have put a bullet in Jessica's ungrateful head a long time ago. Mike and me go way the fuck back to them college days. Dude was basically a brother to me after we got paired up as random ass roommates freshman year. We clicked right from jump, both cut from that same cloth of chicks, bruscus, and crazy antics all damn day. Mike was the wingman who'd back my plays whenever we'd hit up a party trying to score with drunk slutties. I'd hook him up too whenever I could. Shit, I even showed that punk the patented thumb trick move that got panties dropping every time. We was thicker than thieves, having each other's backs no matter what kind of trouble we'd find ourselves in. At least, that's what I thought before Mike decided to destroy my whole fucking life. I'll never forget the day that disloyal poor Jessica dropped the fucking bombshell on me. I had just got home from working a 10-hour shift at this goddamn construction gig, beaten down and sweaty as hell. As I'm cracking open a cold one, Jessica waddles her way over to me with this weird-ass look on her face. She just blurts out, Jack, I'm pregnant, but it's not yours. What the tongue-eating anteater fuck? My brain damn near shut down right then and there. I must have heard her wrong, right? There's no way my wife, the mother of my two beautiful little girls, was admitting to carrying another dude's oops baby. But oh it got so much worse when the truth came spilling out her crusty bap daddy lips. It's Mike's baby. We've been having an affair for months. Fucking Mike. My so-called best friend since freshman year of college. The dude who was supposed to have my back no matter what. All this time that slimy snake was going behind my back plowing my wifey's gitisu? I damn near blacked out from pure unbridled rage. The fucking betrayal was already more than I could handle. But then my dipshit parents had to go and make things a million times worse. After I finally regained my senses from Jessica's slime bullion confession, the doorbell rings. I swing that sucker open and who do I see standing there? My traitorous piece of crap parents, along with that backstabbing fuckwad Mike. Before I could even get a word in, my dad starts spewing this bullshit about how we all need to come together as a family and accept this goddamn situation for what it is. Excuse him? Except that my married ass wife got knocked over by my former BFF. Oh, but it gets even better. My mom is pulling the same family unity crap telling me I just need to be the bigger man and let it go so we can move past this. Move past watch it? Jessica getting railed like a $2 Tijuana whore by Mike? My supposed parents actually siding with the pricks who destroyed my reality? I was seeing red at this point. Anger unlike anything I'd ever felt before coursing through my veins. 
the sheer audacity of these fucksticks to not only betray me, but then expect me to roll over and accept it. I was fucking done with all of them in that moment. I just started laughing maniacally at that point. A deep, bellowing laughter that scared even me a little. But I didn't give a flying fuck. My entire world had already shattered into a million pieces around me. The life I thought I had? The wife, best friend, and parents I believed I could trust with anything. All a goddamn mirage. Get the fuck out of my house, I snarled at Mike and my dickshit parents. And Jessica, don't even think about being here when I get back. I stormed right past those slack-jawed bitches out to my truck. My hands were shaking so bad, I could barely get the keys in the ignition. I just needed to get away before I caught a case that night. Over the next few days, I went completely off the goddamn rails, drinking and raging my way through benders I don't even fully remember. But word traveled fast about the twisted situation with my skink wife and scumbag former bestie. Next thing I know, camera crews are camped outside my place, reporters shoving nicks in my boo-soaked face, looking for any soundbite to plaster on the morning news. How could a husband's wife and closest friend betray him like this? Shit like that. I flipped every single one of those vultures the double bird. They had no idea the depravity I was going through. My life was literally imploding in slow motion, and the insufferable media jackals just wanted to gawk at the carnage. You'd think finding out your wife is a lying, cheating succubus would be rock bottom, but oh no. The shit chow was just getting started. Apparently, Mike's skink of a wife finally grew a pair and left his unfaithful ass once she discovered he'd been plow trucking my wife on the regular. Can't say I blame the poor bitch. I'd want to get as far away as possible from that worm dicked loser, too. But of course, Mike being the raging dashikeno that he is couldn't just let her walk away in peace. Nah, this slimy prick had to take things up a notch and catch himself a domestic violence charge for roughing up his soon-to-be ex-wife. Allegedly busted her lip and cracked a couple ribs when she tried leaving with the kids. Fucking scumbag. Not that I gave two shits what happened to Mike at that point. He could have fallen into an abandoned well for all I cared. I was too busy riding my own personal downward spiral into darkness and depravity drowning myself in enough booze and blow to kill a large elephant. Woke up more days than not with no recollection of the past twelve hours, covered in puke and shame. Didn't shower for weeks at a time, just marinating in my own filth and misery. Pretty sure I would have succeeded in drinking myself to death if it wasn't for, out of fucking nowhere, my dipshit parents started blowing up my phone nonstop. Texts, voicemails, you name it all pleading for me to answer them and talk. Like I had a single reason to give those backstabbing cockwaffles the time of day, but they just wouldn't take the hint and fuck off already. Next thing I know, they're camped outside my apartment every goddamn day, my mom bawling her eyes out, dad trying to reason with me through the door. We were wrong, son. We never should have taken their side. Please, just hear us out. Hear you out? After you twats basically gave Jessica and that slimeball Mike your blessing to nuke my entire existence? I'll admit, a small part of me felt something at seeing how desperate and remorseful they were acting. Maybe a slight twinge of sympathy that their dumbasses finally realized what a colossal mistake they made. But that fleeting sense of forgiveness got doused like a lit match when I remembered the full extent of their betrayal. My own flesh and blood parents basically telling me to roll over and accept my wife getting railed by my ex-best friend. Nah, fuck that noise. I didn't have it in me to let them off that easy. Of course that treacherous war Jessica had the audacity to contest the divorce proceedings. Can you believe the balls on this lying side piece? She actually thought she had a shot at getting something out of me after her adulterous shit blew up in her face. Lucky for me, the legal system doesn't take too kindly to home-wrecking whores who commit spousal abandonment and child endangerment by letting their loser side pieces bastard seed germinate in their womb.
Jessica got absolutely crucified in the court of public opinion and social media channels. I made sure every tiny detail of her scandalous infidelity was on full display for the world to gawk at. Let's see how much mileage your pretty little face gets you now, sweetheart. In the end, the judge must have taken one look at the evidence and Jessica's rancid reputation and decided she didn't deserve to be within 500 feet of my poor kids. Awarded me full custody of both my daughters without a second thought. I could hardly believe I actually won something for once throughout this nightmarish ordeal. Just watching that despicable homewrecker's face fall as the verdict got read out was enough to make the past year of anguish almost worth it. Not quite, but almost. With that cheating ward Jessica finally out of my life for good, I knew I had to get the hell out of Dodge before her stench of betrayal choked me out. Ain't no way I could stick around the same city where every street, every bar, every god in memory threatened to dredge up the nightmare of her infidelity. I liquidated damn near every asset to my name and used the cash to put as much distance between me and that toxic wasteland as possible. Packed up my two little princesses and hauled ass out to the West Coast. California, here we come, baby. If I was gonna pick up the pieces of my life, might as well do it somewhere sunny as hell. Those first few months out west were rough, not gonna lie. I was a broke-ass former construction worker with two mouths to feed in one of the most expensive states around. Plus dealing with the lingering trust issues and angst from that ultimate betrayal back home. Score spawn nightmares would jolt me awake every night, replaying the soul-crushing moment Jessica confessed to doing the dirtiest deed possible over and over. Enough to make me want to chug an entire bottle of bourbon, some nights just to black it out. I damn near gave up on the idea of letting another woman into my life, let alone my bed. After the mind-shattering mindfuck Jessica put me through, how could I ever fully trust a female again? They're all narcissistic snakes just waiting to lash out with the venom of betrayal when you least expect it. But then this smoke show named Jen came blazing into my life like a wildfire I had no hope of containing. Fiery red hair, legs for days, and a bodacious booty that just refused to quit. I'm talking dumb thick, yo. At first I thought she was way out of my league, a broken man raising two kids alone while struggling to get back on my feet financially? What could I possibly offer a stallion like that? Turns out Jen got a kick out of my cynical, brutally honest charm. She thought it was refreshing how upfront I am about not having my shit together after the Jessica debacle. Next thing I knew, we were shacking up and she was helping me raise my girls like a second mama. For the first time in forever, I could actually feel my heart thawing from the permafrost Jessica left it encased in. Jen's combination of sexy heat and raw compassion was like a defibrillator, slowly bringing me back to life one day at a time. I gotta admit, even after Jen helped stitch my shattered soul back together piece by piece, the thought of mixing her into the existing family picture with my girls gave me mad anxiety. Like what if history repeated itself and I got suckered by another snake in the grass just waiting to go Frederick Douglass on my ass? But Jen was so god impatient, so relentlessly compassionate about the whole mindfuck situation I had been through. She didn't love bomb me with grand romantic gestures or drastic commitments right away. Nah, she let me set the pace for integrating her into our lives giving me space to work through my emotional baggage at my own speed. Before I knew it, she had become our live and nanny, mom, best friend, and girlfriend all rolled into one. My girls idolized their new Aunt Jen, hanging on her every word and following her around like ducklings. Which was just fine by me, having another set of eyes on them while I was out trying to get us financially straight took a massive weight off. What really sold me, though, was catching the unmistakable way Jen would sneak admiring glances at me when she thought I wasn't looking. The pure, unfiltered adoration in her eyes, it was like she and Joe Wayihi slowly chipping away at the callus around my heart. 
waited with bated breath for any tiny vulnerability to slip through my gruff exterior. Shit, maybe, just maybe, I could risk letting her all the way in after all. As much as Jen's love and support helped patch up the gaping holes in my heart, there was always going to be one spot that stayed raw and festering. The white-hot fury I had towards that sniveling weasel Mike. The mere thought of his smug, unrepentant face was enough to make my blood boil over with rage. I mean, can you even comprehend the soul-crushing audacity of this prick? Dude was supposed to be my ride-or-die brother from another mother, the one cat in this cold world I could trust to have my back through thick and thin. But now that slimeball just had to go and defile my marriage on the most disrespectful level imaginable. And you know the worst part? That scummy rodent never even had the bare minimum decency to act remorseful about detonating my entire reality. No apologies, no words of regret, not even a shred of acknowledgement that he totally atomic bombed my life into oblivion. Just stone cold silence from that gutter muppet, like I never even mattered in the first place. As much white hot hatred as I had simmering for Mike's bitch ass, it was nothing compared to the level of earth scorching resentiment I felt towards Jessica. That depraved succubus didn't just shift me in the heart. She detonated an atomic bomb, obliterating the family we had built from the ground up. For years, I bent over backwards providing everything a woman could possibly want. Unconditional love, financial security, father to her children. Hell, I avoided the strip clubs and Vegas trips with the boys just to prove my dedication. And how did that treacherous whore repay me? By letting Mike's moldy pecker violate every vow she made before God. But you know what really charred my insides? The trauma and emotional scaring Jessica's despicable actions inflicted on our poor daughters. Those two innocent little angels got their childhoods torn to shreds because their egg donor couldn't keep her rancid thighs closed. I'll never forget the looks of confusion and fear in their eyes as the shit hit the fan. Like their entire reality fractured beyond repair in an instant. You're damn right, I spent many a restless night ruminating over how to make Jessica and Mike taste the same soul-crushing anguish they force-fed me. An eye for an eye, a pound of flesh ripped right from their traitorous hides. I damn near went broke paying one of the city's most cutthroat divorce attorneys to financially ruin us both their lives in the courtroom. Jessica got blood dry having to pay out the ass for child support. Alimony having her name dragged through the mud as an unfit mother. I made sure to capitalize on those naked Snapchat pics she sent Mike to destroy any shot she had at maintaining custody. As for that slithering snake Mike, I hired a private eye to dig up every sketchy shred of white-collar dirt in his past to sabotage his career. By the time I was done with them both, Jessica was living in a Motel Werno shooting location desperately trying to bang her way into rent money on Dis the Fears. And Mike Ha, let's just say his penchant for forgetting to claim cash bonuses got him kicked out of his cushy corporate job straight into a bookie orange jumpsuit for tax evasion. Sold their houses right out from under them too, leaving them penniless and hopeless just like they left me. But even after achieving that supremely gratifying payback, Something still didn't feel complete, you know? Like I had won every battle but still felt hollow on the inside. Maybe because no amount of legal vengeance could ever undo the trauma of what they did. Or maybe, just maybe, I was leaving room to dish out some nice cold-blooded revenge when they least expected it. The kind that would make their blood turn to ice and rectum's clench shut tighter than a dog's lips on the mailman's butt. Only time would tell if they had truly paid their total due.